The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We have a question here from Mr. Z in the den, and he's asking if any of the people that I talk to, which is the only person I talk to, which is John Jameson, if there's a bottom forming in 45000 in the Bitcoin, uh, possibly, but uh, there seems to be a heavily negative uh, implication on this. I mean, it could certainly hold that level, but anything below 45000 would really be uh, quite negative because we haven't had a bounce, folks. We had that big drop and the high as we've gotten is i think 51,000 and we backed off and touched the bottom again that is not good price action but as we know these things can change on a dime but uh, mr z you're right 45,000 is a very very important level to look at it looked like it was going to break it earlier in the day and then the market uh, jumped around uh, I, I don't have any charts on the Bitcoin, but I did have one from yesterday that we, I referred to it because below 45,000 is going to take out that support. And it's important, the fact that the support has been taken out, but there was no rally in between the support. And that's where the real negativity comes in. Not like our stocks, where we don't have any negativity except for the uh, NASDAQ. At, uh, the NASDAQ's getting pretty close to a very, very oversold uh, situation, folks. I'll, uh, I'll bring that up to you just a little bit later, but I wanted to cover a few other things that we're looking at. We're at such critical levels in some of these things. I've posted the ones for the FTSE and the DAX. You can see they're making the same patterns like we're making here. Uh, whether that's a coincidence or not, I don't really know, but uh, I think it's important that we pay you know, very, very close attention to that. Here's the one that's really interesting to me here. This is similar to the one that we saw from the uh, folks at... Uh, Elliott Wave, uh, of course, I do a little bit differently, but you notice the ABCD three drive pattern here measured to 36,933, and the high yesterday was 36,911. Uh, excuse me, 36,094. The high was 36,933, and the ABCD measured to 36,911, 20 points away. Now, we might take it out again, and we might even break out and go a lot higher. That's always a possibility. But the fact that that pattern has been so perfect is really uh, quite amazing. And if we look at the E-mini S&P, uh, by the way, Stan Harley will be our guest today, folks. Tomorrow we will have Joe DiNapoli on for almost the whole show. He'll be on for three quarters of the show and then on friday we'll have tim bost for his usual spot now we're going to look over here at the e mini s p you can see the abcd expend extends it's up to the 1.27 it hit it exactly folks at uh, 4808 we're now trading what 4780 uh, down about 30 ha 28 handles from that level and uh but you know the market hasn't moved very much it's uh you know we, we're seeing the dow leading the markets up, uh, and uh, then the NASDAQ has just been breaking badly. But uh, they're, they're, they're tearing the NASDAQ stocks up, folks. I, I don't know who's doing the tearing and everything. But remember, in the NASDAQs, if you remember, this is a p potential for a pretty significant top up in here because this is a weekly chart, you know, going back uh, five years. And there's your 1.618 number right there at 16,704. And the high was uh, 16,714. Uh, 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 so I, uh, that's pretty close. So that's what it looks like what we could be looking at of a potential top here. But we haven't really done much over these last four or five days. Yes, the NASDAQ has been getting hammered. But it's not doing anything really dramatic. I mean, it, it certainly is not. I mean, it's just been holding together, you know, relatively well. Now, on a different subject note, we have some great information for you, folks. Guess what? Charlie Munster out of Berkshire Hathaway, number two man behind Mr. Warren Buffett himself, actually came out today with a buy signal. 
can you believe this? Let me get this up here and take a look at it. That he was doubling down on his position in uh, Alibaba. He didn't say where he was buying it from the beginning, but he was buying it yesterday. Well, today she's trading up about uh, 2.5%, 3% at uh, 126 already. Now, why did he tell us yesterday and not today? Hmm. You have to look at the history of Berkshire Hathaway. They do this all the time, folks. I mean, they really do. If you remember the movie Wall Street, where he tells uh, uh Rick to go in and uh, go and call the uh, uh, the guy at the at the post and say you know the uh, blue uh, blue uh, ab, 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 blue 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 Atacanda likes uh, uh, blue steel or whatever it was a uh, big ag big whatever it was anyway he was giving him a tip well they already buy that stuff I mean you know they're not going to buy it uh, lately so uh, ninety nine years old uh, no. Monk uh, he's not 99 years old, is he, Bill? No. Wow, if he is, great for him. I'd love to think I had 19 more years. <laughs> I think I will, but you never know. Is I don't think Charlie Munger's that old. I really don't think he is. Well, see, Buffett's 91, so he could easily be nine years older. He's in great health, whatever he is. Uh, looks pretty good. Anyway, Bill, check that for me, because I don't think that Charlie Munger is that old, but I know they, I've seen him do this and other things. Too. Everybody everybody knows that they do it. All right, a couple stocks that we've been watching for a long time. Uh, one of them, of course, is this stock. Hold on one second. I'll get to the bonds in just a second here. But uh, if you remember here, we had this gentleman on from Connecticut a month or so ago back in uh, December when the, this stock was trading up around uh, 320. It went up to uh, 365. Then we had the beautiful Gartley pattern last week right there at 330. And as of today, we were down about 50 bucks at uh, 281. I don't know where it is today, but uh, that's a big. And we're getting ready for huge ABCD in this one, and that's going to be really interesting to watch. Folks, these markets are acting totally differently. So if you're trading the Dow, you better be watching the Dow stocks. If you're trading the NASDAQ, you better be watching the NASDAQ stocks because they, they are different markets, and you have to be very, very careful in here, as you can see, with the volatility that we have in some of these things, it really moves uh, a great deal. And that's uh, the thing that we have to remember as we're looking at these things. Now, I wanted to go through a few of the other stocks that people have asked about over the last few days. Uh, one of them, let's take a look at Nike here for our good friend, Bo. If you remember, we had tremendously bullish news in Nike back on the big gap up up there at 170 we're still trading and you know down about three or four dollars from that level we have not exceeded the 61 percent retracement level and i believe we're still in a downtrend until we can get this above 171 and then it looks like you know you could have some legs to the upside but right now it's just hanging in there to see what's going on to uh what's that uh he is by golly he, thank you dana he was born january 1st 1924 so he's 98 years old shut the front door and raise the rent god bless him god i'd like to think i'll be here i don't see any reason why not all right let's move let's move on to a couple others here that we want to talk let's talk about our good friend mr appell apple and you'll notice here we had a breakout to the upside we'll be right back and take a few breaks we'll be 877-927-6648 You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of the March soybean oil daily uh, for Mr. Z. He was asking the question. He was long from that uh, ABCD bottom. Z, we've got a 135 pattern right here. We're sitting at the 78% level of, the, of 0.3. And so I, you know, I, I trade the patterns. I'm sure it could break out to the upside. Now, you're a monster at carrying these things a lot longer than I do. But this is the area where I would be really cautious. I'd be taking profits in here. And if it gets above it, you know, you can rebuy it you know you can certainly do that but uh, we're over very very overbought in this March soybean oil contract so I would think that it would be a uh, very interesting since we're talking about the grains I wanted to bring something to your attention here folks that uh, I think is relatively important this is the uh, this is the chart of the March corn that we've been watching and uh, we made a very significant 61% retracement bottom here yesterday. Uh, we were sitting right at the 61% retracement after five days down. If you look at back in late uh, November, we had five days down right at the 78% level. But the key to this was the what was happening on the intraday chart to really give us a feel for what was happening with the corn. If you look at this, You'll be able to see without any type of imagination at all the three drive to a bottom pattern that started in November of, excuse me, this is an hourly chart that started on December the 29th, ended up on Monday. You'll see that we gapped up here, uh, stopped right at the 61% retracement. And the news came out about something that was going on in South America, I believe, and the market shot up and went right up to the 78% level, and that has held it so far. We're a little bit low, below that right now. But that was a perfect three drive to a bottom pattern. You can see it very clearly with the A, B, C, D right to the bottom, sitting at the 127. And that 127 was one penny away from the 61% on the daily actually three quarters of a cent so that's the kind that you want to be looking for unfortunately i missed it and mainly because i'm focusing on the euro and the crude oil and the gold and all the other stuff and i missed that beauty in the in the corn trade which i regretted just like i did the bottom in the crude oil uh 
what was it? I think it was eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars ago when it was trading at sixty-seven. It was exactly the same pattern, and I happened to let that one slip by. Someone asked me uh, about the chart of Pfizer, whether they would buy it or not. I'll bring up the chart here. This is the longer-term picture of Pfizer going over the past year. You'll notice here that we had two major expansions. They both came in at 1.90, and you can see the ABCD measures up to 59. We're now trading at 54. Uh, it's, so, it's sold off here, so it's a little bit uh, oversold. You could probably get a bounce, but frankly, with that big ABCD pattern, the last time we corrected, we corrected more than 20%, so 20% of the uh, 62 would take the stock down to about 50. So if you wanted to buy Pfizer around 50, that would be the equal drop like we had from August to October. We dropped $12, and we could do the same thing again from 62 coming down to 50, which would be sitting right at a 50% retracement just like the other one did in the uh, August, to September, uh, August to October period. So that's how I would handle the uh, and remember, I not looking at anything fundamental. I, I heard on the news today the former FDA commissioner, Dr. Scott. I can't remember his last name. Scott Adams. I no, Scott Adams is the dude in New York now, the mayor. Um, I can't remember Scott's Gottlieb. Gottlieb Scott Gottlieb. He uh, said that he didn't think masks did anything to protect us against the flu virus, but but that's his opinion, and you know everybody has an opinion, and they're like armpits. Everybody has one, and it usually smells. The the key, the key fo fo focus is all these numbers, folks, have been lining up so perfectly. We saw the 127 in the S&P 500. This is the weekly on the DAX. Uh, I'm going to bring it up here because I think it's that important. If we ever get above there, I might even go long. And you'll see here that we've been here for several weeks. And we did not make a new high from November the uh, 29th in the uh, – NASDAQ, but the, of course, the other, the Dow Jones went up yesterday and went up to the exact high uh, that the ABCD measured to within 11 points. It uh, overshot it by 11 points, which isn't much. And the open interest is doing nothing, folks. I mean, there's not new players coming into this. So, uh, you know, usually that's a danger sign, but frankly, things may be different this time. Let's move on. Uh, we have Stan Harley at the break, so I want to cover a few of these other things that uh, we've been watching. We covered the Nike. We covered the Pfizer. Uh, we need to talk about uh, the Apple. I didn't get a chance to chat about that here. But you'll notice your Apple broke out in the new high ground when it hit the $3 trillion mark up there at uh, 183. We got to 183.45. We backed off about five points right now, setting right near the 78% the, the level in Apple is 178. If we get Apple below 178, I'd have no idea where it's trading right now. But if Apple gets below 178, then that would be its first danger sign that, yeah, that might be a false breakout. To new high, so um, but it has to get below that 178 first to give you the indication that that's uh, that's where you are. The fact that it didn't continue the next day was rather surprising. It's at 179 even right now. Thank you very much. And uh, so Mr. Z or G G7 is saying that Apple is done. Put a fork in it, and you better you better wear a napkin, Bubba, because that that stock can that stock can fool a whole lot of people. Below 177, to me, it would have a fork in it. But right now, it's just sitting right at that 78 percent level, not really not really doing very much at all. So that's a, a key thing, you know, to pay very very close attention to. Now we also have to take a look. At at crude oil because crude oil is popping up above the 61% retracement. Uh, you'll notice here that uh, the high yesterday was 77.45. 77.44. So far, we've been to 78.40, and I believe we got a shot up here at this 80 level. Now, someone asked me a question if this was a head and shoulders pattern, and it, it really isn't because you don't have any time symmetry between the left shoulder in July, the head in October, and where we are now. If this were stretched out way into February, I said, yes, there could possibly be one, but not, not that way. The way that formula was f figured out by those dudes at MIT, uh, Dr. Lowe and his gang, of quantitative analysis, they did it with time and price, and the left shoulder must be uh, lower than the right shoulder, which it is not. 
and there's got to be good time symmetry between the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's got to be within about one or two percent. And this isn't even that's that's just not a head and shoulders pattern. You just can't. You could call it that if you like, and you could use anything you want for a stop. But to fill full fulfill the formula that they talked about. That is not a head and shoulders pattern. There's not really anything that uh, that you can do about it to, to make any difference at all. Now, I want to switch, and we're going to go over and talk just a tiny bit here uh, about the live hogs because we're going to have a situation in live hogs pretty soon because we had some negative news, of course. The market has had it, handled it really well. You'll notice this is a parallel channel that I drove, uh, have had put in here a week or so ago. It's been fitting purposely perfectly so far so if we get the hogs uh, these april hogs down into this area of around uh, 80 84 and they hold that's going to be a pretty good buying opportunity in my opinion we're going to take a break and we'll be back with stan harley of the harley stock market letter at the end of the break we'll be right back Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter on the tube today. How are you, my friend? Hello, Larry. I'm just doing awesome. Thank you. That's good. I see you've got a chart here that looks like we're, uh, I guess it would be cascading would be the good word, higher. 
And what do you what are you seeing here in the market, uh, Stan? Well, the first chart here is a chart of the weekly S and P 500, Larry. And mm -hmm. uh, what I've done is I've looked at the pattern of highs going back 40 some odd years, mm -hmm. and they seem to be separated by the Lucas number series multiplied by two. Mm -hmm. And it all sprang from the price shock that began on uh, the 20th of October, 1987. So for wow. example, from that low into the March 2000 high was approximately 644 weeks. That of course is the Lucas number 322 times two. Mm -hmm. Then the next high and of importance occurred in October of 07. And that was approximately 398 weeks later, which is the Lucas number 199 times two. Um, 390 weeks after that was the high in May of 2015. Um, mm -hmm. When we add 398 weeks again to that high, uh, we get January 2023. So uh, that suggests to me the, uh, the trend remains northbound for at least another year. And oh, by the way, we did have a COVID high last year, or actually two years ago, now they were in 2022, mm -hmm. in February of 2020. That mm -hmm. was approximately 246 weeks from the May 2015 high. And of course, 246, mm -hmm. as I show there on the screen, is the Lucas number 123 times two. So okay. I know a lot of analysts, a lot of people focus on the Fibonacci series. And while they are important, uh, I have found that uh, the Lucas series is, if not equally important, more important in certain respects, and it mm -hmm. certainly applies on the charts for the stock market. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, now, could you tell the folks the difference between the Lucas numbers and the Fibonacci numbers? Someone's asking this question. I used to know that, but I, I've forgotten it. So if you could you know, tell the folks what the difference is. It, well, the... I won't get into the der derivation because we're a little bit short on time, but the Fibonacci numbers simply are 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on. Uh, and there's a, a quadratic equation uh, that, that constructs the, the root derivation of that number series. The Lucas numbers were found by a French mathematician in the late 1800s named Edward Lucas. He was the mathematician for the French government, and he stumbled upon this series. He also is the one who gave the, num the name Fibonacci to uh, Leonardo of Pisa, who actually brought the number series to Europe um, and, and coined the name Fibonacci. I don't know why Lucas is not given much more acclaim, for the lack of a better term, because not only did he combine the number series that Leonardo of Pisa Pisa uncovered, but he also found the uh, the ratios that uh, the Greek mathematician who lived in uh, in Egypt, boy, his name escapes me for the moment. You know, at any other time of day, I could tell you that I'm just drawing a blank on his name. But he combined the two, and then okay. he also found a companion number series uh, mm -hmm. that, of course, is attributable to him. Uh, and oh, by the way, if you take the Fibonacci numbers, you multiply by 1.382, you get the Lucas series. Okay, that makes sense. I happen to know the answer of why they used it, uh, Fibonacci instead of Lucas. Why is that? Well, Fibonacci was Italian, and they made him a deal he couldn't refuse. <laughs> that was That's a little my attempt at humor, my friend. Anyway, uh, you, I, I'm like you. I don't know where they come from, but there's some pretty smart dudes out there, that's for sure. Now, the next chart that we're going to take a look at here is the one with the New York Stock Exchange Index, I believe. Yes. And, uh, this is, this is making new highs. Yes, and Larry, uh, yeah. I scratch my head on this one, but very few analysts, and certainly the financial media, seem to pay no attention to this. They mm -hmm. pay attention to the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and mm -hmm. kind of leave it with that. But hey, the NYA, which is the broadest measure of stock market activity on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, just today went to a new all-time high. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. With the NYA yeah. going to a, a new all-time high, yes, I know the NAS is lagging right now, and the various benchmark indices play a lead lag uh, 
throughout mm-hmm. the process, but uh, but the New York Composite today at a record high t- in record high ground, that says uh, the bull market is live and well. Yes, if you if you hold the long term charts away from your page, it looks like it's going vertical. But Larry, I think there's more vertical ascent to go. I think we have about another 12 months of bull market, uh, mm-hmm. and I think we're gonna we're gonna see the Dow up somewhere in the neighborhood of close to 40,000. Um, 39 to 40. That's that's been my expectation for some time. That's what the Nikkei did, by the way. It got up yep. to 39 and change. Um, yep. The uh, the Dow Industrials back in 1929 got to 386, which is just shy of uh, 400. The the next lower level, the base power of 10. So um, that's essentially what I'm expecting our market to do. Dow 39,000 ish. Uh, before this thing caps off uh, about a year from now. Okay, makes pretty good sense. Now, the next one's going to grab a lot of attention, and that is the fact that you're looking at Bitcoin here. And this has been a, uh, one of these things, I guess you call it an investment, the blockchain or the coin, whatever you want to call it. But uh, this looks like uh, you have November 10th written here. Is this some type of a, of a turning point that you're looking at here, Stan? Um only for the short term. Uh, what I've noted here are all the major uh, pinnacle highs in the trading mm-hmm. of Bitcoin since the summer of 2010. Uh, mm-hmm. And each one, each one of these that I has I have marked has pushed above a base power of 10 and then pulled back. So, for example, the high in June of 2011 got above 10. And then, oh, and this is a log chart, by the way. It got yes. above 10 and then pulled back. Mm-hmm. Uh, in April of 2013, we got above 100, then pulled back. November of 2013, we got above 1,000, then pulled back. December 2017, got above 10,000 and then pulled back. All the way through the present, the latest all-time high occurred on November the 10th of last year. Did not get to 100,000. Mm-hmm. Is the bull market peak in Bitcoin in? If history is any guide, I would say no, it's not. I think uh, the likelihood is we're going to see uh, we're going to see Bitcoin uh, clip that one hundred thousand mile marker, and then uh, we'll have to see. Well, you've got one million up there too. If you can see hundred thousand, we could easily yep. do one million. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I've seen I've seen tweets from people think that it's going to go to one and two million dollars from a from I, a price of about one, twenty one, cents. One. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to say that. Uh, I, what I am yeah. saying is the likelihood of Bitcoin pushing to 100,000 is certainly very compelling. I'm not even saying that that's a sure thing, but I'm saying it's very compelling. Yeah. Yes, could you stay back with us for one more segment? We can talk yeah. about COVID a minute. You'll be right back with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, and we're now going to go to Johns Hopkins Medical School Center, where Stan's going to talk to us about the COVID chart. Boy, this thing really tracks well technically, doesn't it? It does, Larry. Um, this is, uh, I printed this off uh, about an hour ago. This is the data as reported to the CDC for the COVID cases. And, of course, it's it's a horrible scenario, not only in this country but worldwide. But uh, COVID cases right now are at an all time high. Um, several months ago, I thought I would download the data myself and see if I could apply some technical analysis to it and maybe make some kind of sense of the trends. And what I have done here is I've charted this back all the way back to the very very first day that the data was reported, all the way through this morning. And what I found here, Larry, is the peaks tend to uh, be very cyclical. That is cyclical right around 90 calendar days, plus or minus about three to, three to four days either side of 90. It might be Fibonacci 89. It might be Fibonacci 13 weeks. I don't know, but the regression analysis I've done on the peaks uh, computes the cycle right at 90 calendar days. Over to the left over here, we had a peak in uh, April of 2020. And then what I've done is I label this as a 1.0, so that was a 190-day cycle. The next one occurred in July of 2020. Then the cycle skipped a beat. Two times that was the peak that we saw in early January of last year. A 1.0 increment of that cycle in April, between April of 2021 and September of 2021. <laughs> The cycle expanded by about 1.618, pretty close to 144 calendar days. I am theorizing the cycle will expand by 1.382, and if it does, that would coincide with about 89 times 4 from this peak in January of last year. It would suggest the COVID cases should be peaking this week. And I well, certainly that, hope they do. Everybody hopes they do. But the boy, technical it, analysis uh, of the cycles and the pattern would suggest a peak this week is very, very plausible. Wow. That's really good information. Even though it's not related, market related, it does give us a yeah. little bit of hope that maybe things will get better. So, I hey, listen, I want to. So. I want yeah. to thank you for being with us. We'll have you on again in a couple of weeks, but please be safe. And we will definitely keep in touch and we'll have you on sometime towards the middle uh, to the third week of January, if that's okay with you. Terrific, Larry. I look forward to it. 
Thank you very much, folks. That's Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. You can reach him by going to that site, and he'll be happy to send you a sample of the chart. Um, those of you that are uh, listening here, watch the Treasury bonds very closely here, folks. We just hit 156.22. Uh, that was a new low of the move. It's also a 1.27 expansion number. And if this is any good, it's going to hold here within the next five or six pips, I would think, maybe 10 at the most. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Remember, the stocks and bonds are going totally different. They've been doing that for quite some time. And we'll get back here to look at the bonds here as we speak here in one second. I will get this up here because it was one of the things that we have been ready to talk about today. And here we are. You'll notice here I put this chart up so we could take a look at it to see when this rally, which is way overdue. Now, you'll notice here that we're looking at this market now. We have reached the 1.27 level down here, folks. That's what that blue that blue uh, pattern that I just I did. The, the You see the first pattern there in red? All I did was clone that and move it over, so we should see a rally into that gap level of a little over a point and a half, just like we did the last time. We rallied from 159 all the way up to 160.16. We should see that happen again. This is a four-hour chart, but we're in that zone here. But anything below that 156.18 uh, level uh, would tell you that there's something not right here because this thing has been very bearish. It's continued being bearish. Whether they're going to bring the, uh, you know, build back America or uh, fade Mexico or promote connect Canada, I don't know. All I know is that these charts in the bonds and notes look very, very bearish. They've been bearish for months. And uh, that market topped well over a year and a half ago. And where the bottom is, is anybody's guess. And w one day, these stocks will v eventually turn down. I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime or not. It's, it looks like I'll have to go to 23, maybe. They have to get above these numbers that we've just been talking about, folks. Those are important numbers. You know, we don't do this for, you know... Uh, for our own health, we'd watch this because it helps us, you know, feed our families and stuff when we watch these numbers. If we make new highs in the NASDAQ and if we break above 4808 in the S&P uh, and the Russell goes up and makes a new high, then I'll take a, you know, very quick look. But you've got the Dow Jones, fo fat folks. That's only that's only about 15 stocks of the real expensive ones. You know, your Goldman Sachs and uh Transamerica and a few of those real expensive ones. That that's what's that's what's making the things. Apple is in there, so uh, Microsoft is in there. All of those are have helped. Now Mac, Microsoft's getting hit pretty good. M many of those Fang stocks have already turned down. We focused on that in the newsletter the past few weeks that they were not looking very good, and they've gotten worse as a matter of fact. So that's the main thing that you have to remember is that uh, these things are it's a it's a market for stocks in a stock market. So each one of these is different. Look at some of these things that have really gotten hit. I, I, I noticed Salesforce today was down quite a bit, and then also PayPal was getting hit again, and uh, some of the others that have been, you know, the darlings of this business, and that's uh, been, you know, heading things. Even even Tesla had a had a little bit of a sell-off. I don't know what it's doing today, but uh, you know, just take a quick look here at Tesla. You'll be able to see it here. Yes, the uh, the uh, 156.19. It, did it did it get below 156.19, uh, uh, Maria? Because 156.19 should hold it. Because if it doesn't. I bought it at 22. I put a five-point stop on it. But anyway, uh, we'll see if it holds it. But if it gets below 156, 156.16, uh, uh, that would really be a bad sign here. Okay, that's the low of the day, so we'll see what happens. Thank you so much, Maria. I appreciate it. Here's a chart of Tesla. Uh, whether that's a double top, it's too early to tell. We gapped above the 61% retracement on that news. And then the next day, which was, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The prices for Wednesday are not in here yet. I believe they were down just a little bit today. They'll probably have some pretty good support at 111. Uh, 1100, excuse me, at 1100 in in the in the uh, Tesla. But if Tesla starts going below, uh, it's 156.13 now. Well, that didn't take very long, did it? <laughs> okay, hold on. There's a five ticks I don't have to worry about. All right, let's move on here. But anyway, if is is Tesla below the uh, 
Uh, Tesla is at 1142. Oh, it's it's way up there. So this it's got to get below that 1110 level for even even can thinking that it would be a uh, uh, a uh, retracement at all. So that's the main thing that we want to be paying very very close attention to. So oh wait a minute, this the the bonds never the the bonds never got to 16 yet. They're they're they're, they're 156.20 now. I'm showing here from the TV. That's usually enough to tell us where we are. We're going to have to take a little little break here and we get back we're going to talk a little bit more uh, about the fang stocks and i want to focus on one of them that is very interesting to me we'll be right back Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Okay, folks, I posted the uh, interday chart here on the Treasury bonds. We went from 157.09 down to uh, 156.19, uh, and that's where you can see the 1.27 is there, and the stop would go below the 1.618, which is about five pips. I'm risking six, so we'll see. That's it. Now, I did want to – I posted the chart here of Microsoft. As you can see here, Softy has been one of the strongest stocks uh, in the Dow, but it topped several weeks ago, and uh, 
uh, whether this starts to weaken up more than where we are right now, I don't know. We're only 50 points from a new high in the Dow Jones, so we could certainly do that. But remember, you know, that's a very, very small part of the market. That's only about 15 stocks out of the 5,000 that we look at. The important thing is, is what Stan Harley told us today. And the fact is that we made a new high in the New York Stock Exchange Index today, which is in itself, you know, a great feat. So we'll, uh, we'll watch that one because if it reverses, you know, like we had a re small reversal in Apple after that big breakout on big volume and it reversed and whether that's a key indicator or not, we don't know. To me, it has to get below 177 in Apple for it to be a, a negative signal. I mean, it's got everything going for it. It's just having a little bit of a, you know, a day and a half pullback on this. But if we look at Apple, and you'll see here, if we get below, I'll bring this chart up again so we can look at it. You'll see if we get below that 177 level, we're going to take out the lows of last week on New Year's Eve before we had the run up into the two three trillion dollar level. We had that five dollar run up, and if it breaks back below that five, that's going to trap a whole lot of people over the past 10 days and that will not be a good sign that's why 177 is the key level to be watching and uh, if we get below that then i'll say yes there's a possibility that we could do this remember folks people don't remember but fear is a greater emotion than greed and what goes up must come down at least that's what mr isaac newton used to talk about but he wasn't involved in a market like this well he was in the south sea island bubble uh, i don't know if you know this or not but he lost everything in the south sea island bubble had to start over from scratch as chancellor of the exchequer back in the early part of the UK. So that's what we're looking at today. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. May God bless. Tomorrow is Joey D. at Napoli. He'll be here with us 45 minutes. We'll be right back tomorrow. May God bless.